Yo, what's up? This is DJ T. I'm a host of the Red Eye. What are y'all in? This is interview time. And I want to let this person introduce himself to uh, who he is, man. we going from Alaska all the way down to Florida for this interview. Tell the people who you are, man. What's going on, man? This is Uncle Reed, man. We should been until I pass out, man. All day, man, with my book. All right, Uncle Reese, man, glad to have you on the line, man. Hey, uh, before we get going, man, you know what? I like to hear everybody share a little bit of their testimony, where they came from, and then we're going to get into Until I Pass Out. But before we get started, man, let everybody know uh, what uh, my, my favorite cousin, DJ Will, owes you, man, and why he owes you some man, help. Man, my favorite cousin, DJ Will, man, he, he ain't going to admit it, man, but he actually owed me $4.25, man, back from 2007. Uh, man, he I let him borrow five dollars. He paid me back seventy five cent in two thousand and eleven, <laughs> but but he still owed me four twenty five. But I, I'm cool with it. God told me to forgive, so I'm a, I'm a try. I'm gonna need the people to pay for me though. All right. <laughs> hey, hey, uh, let, let me talk hey, to man hey. with my favorite character, man. So he, sit, so he sit on me, man, when I when he see me again. <laughs> Hey, favorite cousin, man, make sure you get that man his four dollars twenty five cent. I'm gonna actually text you after we get done with this interview, so I can tell him. Give Uncle Reese's $4.25, man. Come on. Hey, Uncle Reese, man. Hey, uh, hey, man. 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 They pushed it on me, but they never really pushed it on me in the sense of, you know, uh, once I got a certain age, once I got, I think, like 16, they was like, hey, um, you ain't saved. We know you ain't saved. We ain't going to make you keep coming to church. You ain't saved, bro. So yeah. at that point, like, I kind of was just like, well, you know, I know I ain't been saved, but I'm glad y'all know that. Um, I kind of went my own way. They never, I never went to church again. Like, and, but I, and I think I went, I might have went to church once when I was 17 because I think I was trying to get at this girl that went to my parents' church or something yeah. like that. But I, after that, I never went. She didn't want to holler at me, so I just never went back. So she was, she wasn't saved either. I, I don't know why she was going, but uh, but so I kind of just man went from from there, man, just kind of went. Did my thing, man. You know, really got embraced by the world, man. I, I, um, I did music, um, at my high school, and you know, just all around cool, fun type of guy, man. And got a lot of love, man. Uh, my senior year, that's when I started really, um, you know, just really getting on girls and and really, you know, getting involved with women and stuff. So I had a lot of fun with that, as far as like what the world would consider fun, and even what some Christians would consider fun. Because they don't really understand, like, the freedom and the fun and really loving God, serving God, having a good time. Uh, man, my life was radically changed, brother. Um, I was 19 years old, and I actually saw some Christians that I could relate to. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, it was crazy, man. I mean, I saw some Christians that I actually wanted to hang with, not even because they was Christians, but just because they were having a good time. In life, because uh-huh. I mean, truth be told, I've always been a rageaholic. I've always been somebody who loved to have a good time. I love to laugh, and uh-huh. I never chose Christ because growing up, I never saw anybody near my age that was in love with Jesus. And it's like the people who were saying it, they all looked like they was unhappy. Like they didn't really want to be at the church. <laughs> so I don't want to be here, you know. So yeah. I mean, I'm, I met. People, man, I met uh, Melanie Hager, and um, and uh, cause she was uh, she was kind of talking to one of my one of my homeboys, but uh-huh. I knew there was something different about like she really loved Jesus and she really mm-hmm. loved him for real, you know. Mm-hmm. And I I kind of saw their relationship, and then I was like, yo, she's I think she's really a Christian. So I put it to my homeboy. I put it to my homeboy like, yo, like now I'm, we might not be saved, but. You when you see God, you don't play with him, you know? Yeah. Uh-huh. I was like, bro, you got to leave her alone because she's bad for business. Like, she just, bad stuff will happen to us. And, you know, he left her alone. And, you know, she actually became my friend. And so she started introducing me to other Christian people. 
And then next I met um, a young lady, man. I met a young lady named Carrie Alexander. Um, actually, who's my fiance now. And All right, man, congratulations. Hey, hey, come on, son. Hey, come on. Hey, come on. Hey, you better make me shout now. Come on. Come on. Hey, you can't, you, can't, you can't pass out on the interview, bro. Hey, hey, I'm gonna, hey, well, you got me excited, boy. Don't say come on as I say my baby name. Uh, and it was, uh, you know, she, um, she was amazing, bro. And she was just beautiful, man, inside and out. And, uh, she was just amazing, bro. And, uh, I started meeting people that they were involved with on college ministry, and I was like, wow, I've never met brothers like this. Like, I've never ever yeah. met no brothers who know you like a girl, and they just like, hey, bro, I just want to let you know, dog, we're going to look out for her. And I'm like, nah, I'm good. You got to look out for my lady. But, I mean, they really looked out for her, called me. Like, I mean, these brothers would, would, would call me to... I mean, they would just call me, man, and just be like, hey, yeah. you want to know if we got to cover it. You ain't got to, you know, we going to take care. We're going to wash the car, pay for it. I mean, I was like, wow, these are the guys. <laughs> I was uh-huh. like, I ain't never met no brothers like that, and I wanted to be them. Like, that's okay. just it. They were so cool. Like, I wanted what they had. Like, that's the first time in my life I saw that I didn't have nothing. And I mm-hmm. thought I was a freaking man, but I wasn't, man. And, yeah. bro. I saw what they had, and I was determined to get it. And I was driving um, to her house one day, man, and I found God driving to her house in the neighborhood. I pulled over, and, man, I found God, man. Now, as far as this radical worship, man, I found this type of worship on the rooftop of the Wanish Way Garage at Florida State University. All uh, right. So let's, let's go. Uh, let me, let's, okay, so... Hold on. Oh, I'm a little long, I'm a little long wind talking. No, you good, you good, man, you good. But I wanna I wanna break into another question because because uh, uh you say you like to have fun. So I know a lot of times at church it can seem like uh it's monotone and like a stick in the bud. So when you was looking at church from a younger perspective, go back and revisit that and tell me how you saw church when you were younger to how you see it now. Um, honestly, and, and this is the reality of the situation. I saw it for what it really was. It was a place that a whole bunch of people went to because they were searching for something more than what they had. But it was a place that, especially maybe like, I would probably say 95% of them didn't even really want to be. Uh-huh. Because I'm sure we've all been to a church that we just, my thing is this, man, like, I know, I know what the scripture means when it said, I was glad unto me when they said, go to the house of the Lord. Bro, yeah. I would say 90% of the churches that we go to, we're never glad when they say, let's, like, people be like, let's go to the house of the Lord, and we be like, dang, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> like yeah. Saturday coming, and you like, dang, I got to go to church, like, yeah. that's what it was, and, yeah. and it ain't, it ain't supposed to be like that, and, yeah. but, but I mean, it, it, it doesn't even happen. And even if you at a church that's considered born, you don't have to be born there. Mm-hmm. That's right. Like, yo, I'm not concerned about what church I go to anymore because I'm like, if I'm there, we finna have a good time. Yeah. That's, that's I'm gonna have is. a good I'm gonna have a good time. <laughs> yeah. You might not have no choice but to have a good time right along with me. <laughs> I mean, what's going to happen is I'm going to have a good time. What's going to happen is y'all going to just tell me I got to leave or something because I'm going to have a good time, man. I'm going to lift my hands. I'm going to worship. I mean, yeah. it's, it's it's an intimate thing. Like, I'm going to eat the word up. Like, you know what I mean? So, uh-huh. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right. So, I see, uh, I heard you mention uh, Florida State University. So, we going to go to the... Uh, how shall I say the uh, the Pac-10 versus the ACC as far as schools because I'm a Pac-10 guy, you know what I'm saying? And you are ACC guy, and Come so uh, one of one of my good buddies like Florida State University. So tell me about your experience. And actually, this is funny because the guy from Alaska actually goes to Florida State University now, plays on the basketball team. So uh, tell me tell me about your experience at uh, Florida State. Well, man, Florida State. Um, now, don't get, now. What I had was a form of, I had a form of passion for the Lord, 
Like I was in love with him and I mean everything was emotional when it came to God. When I went to Florida State, that's when I met ministers who were like, okay Reed, dude, you got the passion, you got the zeal, you got everything down packed, but now let's work on your character. Yeah. Like they taught me um, they taught me focus, passion. They taught me, you know, uh, you know, uh, intentional passion, like where you actually have an aim and objective. Like they really just taught me how to hone in on the love that I have and to really express that and communicate that how I would like. And I mean, it all goes back even to the way, you know, to the way that I worship, man. Like I remember. Um, Warnish Way parking garage, man, fifth floor. Mm -hmm. Like one night, I just happened to go up there and uh, I met this guy up there and he was like smiling ear to ear. This white kid named uh -huh. uh, Justin McGurn. I'll never forget him, man. Uh, this guy changed my whole life. This guy is crazy. It's like he was searching for God. Like he wasn't even a Christian when I first met him. And mm -hmm. uh, he was on the parking garage. I say, bro, what what you doing up here, dog? Like, I know what I'm doing up here, but what what you doing? <laughs> yeah. up here? He, he was just like, man, I'm looking at the moon, bro. White. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I turned around and I looked at the moon, bro, and I just fell in love with creation again. Uh huh. And he was like, look at all the lights, man. Look at the lights. I was like, wow, dude, this, this kid, is I. I'm like, he's not high, but yeah. he, he's looking at everything, and he's like, look how small we are, bro. I'm like, dude, and this kid starts spitting the song, like, mm -hmm. talking about how you can't deny the existence of God, because if you look at the creation, and blah, 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 he starts spitting the songs about the joy of the Lord and all this, and so, this kid was so interesting, I like, went up there the next day he was up there again and I started to meet I started meeting him up there and I brought my Bible and I was like dude all that stuff you were saying is right here uh -huh. and he, he ain't read the Bible so I'm like bro like you're talking about what David this is the same stuff like it's a little bit different but bro I'm like and then so I started using that as an opportunity to tell him about God but long story short like one day I was up there by myself he wasn't there and I just mm -hmm. decided to crank my music up as loud as I could crank. And I just like, I'm finna dance, dude. And I started yeah. worshiping. I started, yo, I, I literally worshiped until I passed out. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, and it was so addictive, bro, that I went up there almost every other night around midnight. And I did the same thing, man. I did the same thing for maybe about six months. And I remember I invited a couple of my friends up there. And before you know it, I go up there, be 20, 30 people up there just ready to dance, man. <laughs> yeah. It became the spot that we went to where we wanted to touch God. Like, I don't know what it was. Maybe it was being hired. I don't know what it was, but we worshiped until we passed out there. Like, every oh, night. Oh, that's what's up. Jeff yeah. Jenkins, E from Owen, Brandon Murphy. Like, uh -huh. we was up there worshiping until we passed out. Oh wow, that's a, that's amazing, man. That's that's amazing. All right, so is that um, is that the birth of the song um, "Worship Till We Pass Out"? Is that is that right? Make where you got that from? Um, it's kind of I would say it's more of a lifestyle, man. Um, you ever heard of "Without Jesus I Suck"? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We we gonna go there in a minute, man. We that's where without that's where without Jesus our stuff came from on that rooftop. Okay. Like just really Okay, so let's just, go let's go there then. Let's go uh tell them first first tell them a little bit about without Jesus I suck. because uh, that I think that's that's real huge, man. I've been saying it was on CNN and Fox News and B E T and uh I like I love the slogan, man. I think that's something that the young people really um you know, representing yeah, yeah, hard for tell them. 36, man. Oh, man. Hey, you, hey, you know, son, I started saying young people recently, and I was like, man, I'm getting old. <laughs> when the devil starts saying young people, you be like, man. That, that means you, you grown up. Today. I was, hey, I was talking. No, you know what? I don't even think I got to do nothing with age, but when you get a full-time job and you see brothers yeah. without no full-time, you just be like young people, you know? Yeah. <laughs> 
you like, you know what I'm Yeah, bro. I tell That's you. What I mean. You, when you go to work, man, then you rest everybody else is just young people. Young people ain't got no job. Young people ain't going hey, to church. Young people. Young people ain't young people. We got to pray for the young people. Hold on. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm a, uh, I'm a, uh, a team uh, teacher at my church. So, um, you know, so young people is just common. You know, when you're talking, when you're dealing with teenagers, you just call them young people. They be on folks. Come on up again. So, so, tell, so, while we talk about that, go and tell young people about uh, your your slogan. Without Jesus, I suck. Man, honestly, uh, without Jesus, I suck. Man has has been a blessing. Um, a, a buddy of mine, her name is uh, Lisa Fields. She's actually the uh, co-owner of the company. Um, she said, "Hey, Reese, um, we're about to graduate." in less than two years and in two years we're gonna have to live in the real world mm-hmm. and I was just like it was so depressing just thinking about <laughs> I'm gonna have to live in the real world as far as yo in two years college is gonna be over we're gonna be in corporate America and she was like I do not want to do anything that don't involve Jesus like I don't want to be an investment banker and um you know, because not only the wrong, those things are, they still involve Jesus. You can't do anything without involving Jesus, but, you know, the type of work we wanted, we wanted to be in an environment where we could just stream Jesus every day, you know. And that, that mm-hmm. ain't for everybody, because we need people to go into the work field, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, we need people for that. But, you know, we was just like, man, shoot, man, let's start a t-shirt company. Had no clue, uh-huh. never made a t-shirt, sold a t-shirt. And uh, mm-hmm. at the time, my Facebook status was Without Jesus, I Suck. So she mm-hmm. was like, man, let's put Without Jesus, I Suck on the shirt. And I was like, nah, I ain't really, like, <laughs> it's cool, but nah, I don't know, man. That's a pretty outlandish shirt. I I don't think I can wear that around my grandma. So she takes it upon herself to just go ahead and get the shirts printed. And then she took my half of the money and got the copyright. <laughs> <laughs> so I was really mad. I was really mad. Like, <laughs> yeah. I was mad. And when I got the shirts, I was just like, man, Bumpy, I wore one of them shirts, dude. Like, I talked to maybe like 75 people about Jesus that one day. <laughs> just standing in one spot, like, kids was, people was, because my kids, we all the same age, but people was coming up to me, talking about, oh, sweet shirt, bro. And, bro, you know, that shirt hard, oh, bro. And, <laughs> all different races. It, I ain't like those yeah. shirts, young man. I mean, all different races, man. And, and yeah. I started conversations with them all. And it's uh-huh. crazy because, you know, trying to witness the people on college, it's like they be running from you. But wearing that shirt, <laughs> yeah. I talked to 75 people a day. And oh, I had a duffel bag full of shirts. I mean, they moved in like, literally like five, six days, moving 50 shirts. It's like, five. 30 to 50 shirts a day, easy. And they weren't wow. cheap either. They, they were 20 dollars a shirt. Yeah. Couldn't, couldn't <laughs> keep them, man. Could not. Oh, keep that's them. good. Yeah. yeah. So that, so y'all still doing, uh, y'all still doing the shirts without Jesus? I suck. Oh, as far as um, selling them and marketing them and moving them. Yep. Okay. You got a? Uh, they got a website for that? Uh, yeah, just uh, uh, without Jesus. I suck. Dot com. <laughs> Pretty funny. Like, dude, to be told, man, at, at, hey, anything that involves us, yo, we're going to have a great time being the best. Period. Yeah. That's how we roll, man. <laughs> that's, that's amazing, man. So, um, before hey, we can, go, let me, gotta... let, me, let me say this real quick. The Facebook page... Right now, we got 277,000 fans and followers on the Facebook page. So, please oh, like us, man. Facebook, um, with that, Facebook.com uh, slash Without Jesus, I Suck. You can find us. Or just Without Jesus, I Suck in the search bar. All right. That's what's up, man. I'm going I'm to uh, make sure when I post this up, I put the link up um, to where they can get um, the Without Jesus, I Suck information and all that stuff, man, so they can get it locked in. And then... You know, we might have to have to go home without Jesus. I saw chapped up in Alaska. You know what I'm saying? Just had the people all um, that, that would be that would be <laughs> awesome. Yo, like, honestly, we're, we're really looking to branch out 
and uh, we have an office in Tennessee. Uh, we're trying to do an office up in Texas. We got, of course, you know, we all in Florida. Um, Jacksonville. Yeah. Uh, we just, Tallahassee was where it kind of was birthed. But, mm -hmm. you know, we just started another office in Tallahassee. So, I mean, shoot, man, if you're interested, man, just email us, man, info at withoutjesus.com. Like, we'd love to get that thing popping wherever you're at. All right, that's what's up. All right, so tell me a little bit about the uh, the label. How do you say it? Finero uh, Music? Uh, tell me a little uh, bit about the label. Uh, well, Finero Music, it's not actually a record label. It's just, mm -hmm. it's really just me and my boy, my brother Jay Harris. Um, he's mm -hmm. a godfather, man. In Jacksonville, mm -hmm. he's Jay Harris, man. He, he runs Straight in Air Boutique. Um, mm -hmm. He's pretty much who God used to kind of... They kind of say, Uncle Reese, man, you got a lot of talent, but let's focus that and let's actually produce something with it. So, I mean, the narrow is is just really our it's just really our union, our relationship, and it, it's not a record label, but it's it's just what who we are. It's just what we do. Um, straight okay. Up, uh, Jay Harris, man. I mean, truth be told, as far as the video, man, if Andre he wasn't in my life, man. And there would have never been a, a worship until I pass out. <laughs> okay. That's straight up. I love it. Hey, on, a, on a real, man, the video is a nice, nice work on the video, man. Just want to give you props on the video, man. It's, it's uh, a great Space video, Chair man. Tim, Space Chair uh, Tim did that video, like, uh, I'm so serious. Uh, Juice 2020, um, he is so uh, talented. I uh, just with the videography. Um, I mean, literally, it was just... He heard my song and he's like, Reed, what do you want to do?" I was like, "Man, I want to, I want to just go freaking nuts." And he was like, "All right, all right, I'll figure that out." And so he, he put everything together, man. He just like, "I'm gonna set it up so you ain't gotta do nothing but just be you." Okay, that's right, hey man. They, they, they did, they get a, they did a, uh, an amazing job, man, showing uh, you and and letting you be you in the video, man. That's great to be able to do what you do in a video form and just worship really until you pass out man that's that's a that's a that's a that's Yo, I passed, to be able to do I that passed, like I passed out during the shoot because it's like what y'all saw yo uh -huh. what y'all saw how I walked yo that building that I walked around man we did uh -huh. that take maybe like eight times bro <laughs> like and then in the building I did the worship until I like the whole I went through the whole song maybe about 35 times Seriously. Wow. <laughs> wow. Like, going, going hard every time. Uh-huh. Man, that's crazy. So tell me a little bit about your experience. Um, I was reading that you uh, you get to speak at the high schools and stuff. Tell me tell me how that's going as far as you're getting into the high schools and talking to these other uh, young people, as we say, uh, about, um, you know, they, they exploits in life. Um, man, it's actually shifted a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Because, you know, before, uh, when I was going into high school, you know, it was more of uh, on a motivational speaking uh, type perspective where it's like, hey, guys, um, you know, be something with your life. You know, everybody serves to God, whether they admit it or not. But now, I mean, it's, it's shifted to just, to just really maximizing what we have and really uh, grabbing people who are inspired by art. And who mm -hmm. actually who actually like what we do, and mm -hmm. like going to these schools and saying, "Hey, look, follow your dreams, chase your dreams, blah 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 mm -hmm. blah 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 blah." Come and meet with us afterwards, and hey, let's plug you up in a life group, let's bring you to the Bible study, and let's really disciple you and pour into your life for real and just real deal, son. Life without uh Jesus. Is, is horrible, man. Like, you don't even know how horrible life is until you taste what we do, like, taste what we have, like, so, I mean, it's been a total shift. Um, getting into mm -hmm. high school is, is really not hard because no one goes into a high school mm -hmm. without a criminal record that says, hey, I want to volunteer for free and just talk to people. Like, <laughs> yeah. Not, a, not yeah. a black guy, like, that ain't, yeah. that ain't gonna happen. So yeah. a lot of times when I go to that school and, and I say, hey, you know, and I pull out my transcripts and be like, these were my grades in college. And they're like, you did yeah. in college. So they'll ask you <laughs> some talk, man, you know. Yeah. I mean, truth be told, if, if you 
you got a job nowadays, you can just, I mean, if you go to any school and say, I want to talk to some kids and you ain't got a criminal record, they'll let you in. Yeah, because yeah, they, they looking, they looking for some kind of an example of somebody doing something. Uh, you know, what you what know something worth good. Yeah, they looking for somebody. All right, so I'm going to hit you with a, uh, I got a, I think you answered my man's first question. Uh, I'm shout out to my man, Robert Johnson. Uh, who had his uh, viewers question. He was mad excited when I told him I was going to get it off a race. He was like, man, I love that song until I pass out that song off the chain. <laughs> so, but he asked, he asked some, uh, some questions for you. First, he, um, I think you asked him, he just, he just wanted to know what led you to Christ um, since you had grown up in church. But I think you answered that. But um, if you had anything else you wanted to add to that as far as um, <clears throat> his question goes, um, feel free to... Um, to add um, to that. I'll, I'll say I saw Jesus for real in other people. Mm-hmm. Like, I saw the type of Jesus that I had been hearing about in the book, uh-huh. and I saw people like really doing it, and they were happy, and they weren't. They, they, I saw them. Like, I saw Jesus in them. And once I seen it, that was it. I wanted it. Mm-hmm. That's what's up. That's what's up. Okay. And then uh, his next question is probably going to uh, we gonna get into it. But he said he really wanted to know when the CD dropping and how the CD is coming along. Man, truth be told, the CD is... It's, it's kind of like as far as the CD, making music, that's like the easiest part. Like, in our camp, we may have 30-something songs. I mean, we're dropping songs, like, every second of the day, like, I mean, the hardest part is honing in on the songs that we want, and then mm-hmm. just picking on, picking on the right time to release it, because, I mean, we're not in a rush at all, mm-hmm. but I tell you, we're just kind of enjoying the success of this one song, and just mm-hmm. riding out, riding off that, man. And just mm-hmm. enjoying it and seeing how far we could push it. Um, mm-hmm. If I had to say, I mean, definitely um, no time later than this, this fall. Okay, okay, that sounds like a plan, man. Sounds like a plan. Uh, you on? You in with the Red Hour with host DJ T Walk? I got Uncle Reese on the line, man, chopping it up with me, man, and he's been sharing his experience, man. Uh, great. I, he, he's not a young person anymore. He's a, he's an older. I, I, <laughs> what you call? What you call him, Reese? When we grown in the Lord. <laughs> no, uh, uh, horny. No, let me see. Let me see. <laughs> hey man, it, if you if you wear, uh, you know them old dude sandals that, that them brothers are trying to wear. They dress. If you wear them, it's too late for you. Like you don't wear them sandals like without no socks with a suit on. Like as long as you don't do that, you still fresh. I. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we gonna let him go, man. <laughs> you can't, you can't, you, yeah, you gotta, you gotta be fresh and deaf when you show up, man. <laughs> if you wear yeah, the, yeah. if you wear the sandals, sandals with the socks on, then. Uh, and, 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 and another <laughs> thing, don't don't put on jeans with the blazer no more. Like, <laughs> don't do that no more, cause like that's that's not cool no more. But you know, <laughs> that's what we do. With, with, with a button-down shirt that ain't tucked in, with a blazer on and jeans, you know what I'm saying? Don't do that. That like, means, that means you're that's, out. that's telling your age. That's like you're too old because you're not cool no more. Or if you raise the roof still. <laughs> uh, All right. So, so you, so, hey, man, y'all heard of three standards for, uh, for young people. And old people, he gonna uh, he gonna school y'all. So what does uh, Uncle Reese like to do in his uh, free time, man? As far as um, outside of work and all that stuff, man. Um, man, I'm relational, man. Like I love nothing more than to hang with my team. Um, one thing about my team, uh, we got Antario Johnson, uh, John Lunkin, well, Little John Lunkin Jr., uh, Jay Harris, uh, Chad Holmes. I mean, we actually like each other. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we we actually enjoy each other's company. You know, like, you know, in my free time, we hanging out anyway. And two, it's free time almost is work. Because mm-hmm. we hang together anyway, and all we want to do is talk about like 
Jesus and what we doing and you know and on top of that like everybody that we roll with loves the woman that God has given them that's what's up and that's everyone up. in my everyone in my camp is married uh, me and mm -hmm. Chad are engaged um, mm -hmm. so I mean truth be told if I ain't kicking it with my homies I'm kicking it with my fiance uh, we hanging out with her parents or you know with my parents or something like that so I mean we just vibe all right that's what's up man Uncle Reese, man, uh, before we get ready to cut out, man, tell the people, I want you to, first of all, you already told them where they find uh, um, Without Jesus, I Suck. I think that's pretty easy, man. I would love to see uh, the, the people wearing that in the last one, Without Jesus, I Suck. But tell them where they can find uh, Uncle Reese at. Um, uh, give them all your info, man, Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff, man. Okay, um, you can find Uncle Reese on Facebook at uh, Uncle Reese Music. That's U N C L E R E E C E. Reese, we decided to spell it a little different. We put a C in there instead of an S. R E E C E. Uh, on Twitter at Uncle Reese. On Instagram at Uncle Reese. Um, uh, did I miss one? Oh, iTunes. You can just search Uncle Reese. You can find until I pass out, and you can find uh, that remix. Um, gotta give a shout out to uh, my man Reconcile, uh, my man Black Knight. Uh, my man MC Jen and my big brother uh, from another mother in the faith, Eshawn Burgundy. I've um, got to give a shout out to those guys because they did an awesome job on the remix. Like, for real, for yes, real, they, they murdered that. They murdered that joint. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, I'm, uh, and I'm going to have that remix in it for y'all, man, uh, up soon as soon as I post the next show, man. I'm not going to, I try to keep interviews separate now because I want people to get the full interview. And not be wasted or fast forward the interview and be like, oh, I just want to hear the song. Uh oh, uh oh, now nah, you got to hear everything. Come on now. Yeah. You got to hear it all. Come on. So I, so, I, so I separate them because people be like, oh, I, I want to hear the song. So I used to put the songs with them, but now I don't put the songs with them. I just do a whole other show and then I had a song usually open it. And then um, actually, I'm going to start on the um, app and I'm going to drop a couple months from now. Uh, or coming soon, actually, man, probably like a couple weeks, man, um, I have a feature artist, and then when I hit people up with the feature artist, man, they'll be able to get the interview and all that stuff, so that'll be great as well. Oh, Reese, man, thank you for coming on, man, thank you for coming, for taking time out, I know it's like 9.30, 9 o'clock, almost 10 o'clock, man, you probably about ready to go worship till you pass out. <laughs> I'm just ready to pass out, he ain't got nothing to do with worship. Come on. Come on, baby, you gotta check out. Other reefs, man. The, uh, the remix is off the chain. I, I certify, man. It's just that approval, man. Y'all can get to cop that. And then the actual song until I pass out, man, is certified too. So y'all make sure y'all cop both of them. Uh, check out Uncle Reese on the links that he gave you, man. And thanks for keeping it locked to the Red Hour. Uncle Reese, man, thank you for coming on, man. Anything you want to say before we get ready to cut out? Oh, um, man, I, I would love to uh, give a shout out to my mama, um, Cecilia A. Hicks, and then my daddy. Uh, Maurice Hicks uh, Senior, man, they are amazing people, and they it, they really had a lot to do with who I am today, and I really appreciate them. All right, thank you, Uncle Reese, man. Uh, we gonna we gonna keep it keep it uh keep in contact with your boy, man, via Twitter. You know how to get at me, and you got my number, man. So I want to thank you for coming on. Uh, this your boy DJ T Walkman, the host of the Red Hour, signing off. Y'all, I'll let you boy. Do it, J T Walk.